Um, so yeah, if you're there and you've got a team name, comment and let us know you're there. Um, this quiz is 20 questions and every quiz is going to be 20 questions, but it might be different points um, because sometimes if a question is too long, I've been splitting it and stuff. Um, so it's out of 30 points. There's 30 possible points you could score. Um, I sure hope that people get more than 12 this week. I feel really bad about last week. Um, but apparently loads of people learnt some stuff, so <laughs> yay! <laughs> um, just trying to read if I've got any more notes. Da, 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 da. No, that's it. So yeah, are we good? We still live? We still going? Yeah, cool. Okay. Shall we start, or do I need to vamp a little bit more? Yeah, we're good. Yeah, we're good to go. Okay. So week two, twenty questions, thirty possible points. Hello, random rose. Oh, hello, random rose. Oh, people are commenting. This is good. I um, don't know if that's a team name or not, but I like it. It's a team name. Team of one. Team of one's the best. There's no I in team, but there is a me. There is a me, yeah. Um, also, team, you know, you can cheat if you're in a team of one, which I always approve of. There's also Serena Cooper. Serena is, is here. Person. That is a person, yeah. <laughs> Serena comes to Sewing Club. Hello, Serena. It could be a team of cool except Serena Cooper. <laughs> yeah, team Serena yeah. Cooper. I like that. Scissor chef, team of one. Scissor chef? Yeah. That sounds There's mildly a violent. <laughs> Scissor chef? Hang on. That's not sewing. Just Charlotte. Just Charlotte. Laughing emoji. <laughs> Yay! So hey. people are here. Jane Fitz. Hey, Jane. Mark. Hello, Jane. <laughs> Yay. Ah, oh, people. Awesome. So, right, let's start it properly then. Um, quiz. So, quiz week two, 20 questions, 30 possible points. So, question one is what, and I started simple again, and I've gotten progressively harder, so bear with me here. Uh, what is the feed dog? on a sewing machine. Question one for one point, what is the feed dog on a sewing machine? Now I think that's easy, but I'm gonna to be told off, aren't I, that it's really difficult, so we'll see how that goes. Question two, what is the balance wheel on a sewing machine? Uh, for one point, I only found this out a few, few years ago, there was a name for this thing, so you know, hey. Do you find that when you've been sewing for like decades and suddenly someone calls something by its proper name and yeah, you're surprised? That's me quite a lot of the time. <laughs> Self-taught. So question two for one point was what is the balance wheel on a sewing machine? So question three for one point. By 1900, what percentage of global sewing machine sales did Singer have? Was it A, 80%? B, 50%, C, 65%, or D, 25%. So question three, by 1900, what percentage of global sewing machine sales did Singer have? 80%, 50%, 65%, or 25%. Now I'm always surprised about how many sewing machine companies did were there right at the beginning. Like you had Faf, you had... Um, I think brother was around. Some Jones. Jones was around. Oh, there was, that's you know. a whole question you could have done. Oh yeah, how many sewing machines? Well, actually, quite a few of the companies were up and running by 1900, I think. So yeah, that was question three. So question four is a two-parter, and it's two points if you get both parts. So question four A for one point is what percentage of sewers own more than one sewing machine? Is it 19% or 51%? I typed the title cards this week, guys, so if there's any spelling mistakes, blame my assistant. <laughs> we have to do it in Photoshop, don't you? And there's no spell check in Photoshop. It's horrendous. So question 4A for one point. What percentage of sewers own more than one sewing machine? Is it 19% or 51%? And then the second part of this question for another point, 4B, question 4B. And what percentage of sewers own just one sewing machine? Is it 19% or 51%? <laughs> Flipped the percentages there, didn't I? So 4A is what percentage of sewers own more than one sewing machine? Is it 19% or 51%? And question 4B, what percentage of sewers own just one sewing machine? 19% or 51%? I like multiple choice. Do you like multiple choice? It feels like you can... Are you talking to me? I am talking to you. I'm talking to you because you're the only one here. Well, Purd's here as well. Sorry, our cat's called Purd. Sorry, if you heard me saying the word Purd, that's our cat's name. It means lost, but it also stands for Petty Mad because he's a little shit sometimes. 
but mainly he's just cute and fluffy. I think you can see something outside. He's been fixated on that window for a while. I wanted to call him Jeff. Yeah, you weren't allowed to call him Jeff. That's just a stupid name for yeah, a cat. Jeff the cat. It's like my cousin who had a gerbil or a guinea pig called Alan, and I just found that too human. You can't have a pet called Alan. It's just, it's like a... Can you have a pet called Alan? Yeah, yeah. Answers on a postcard. That, that's not one of the quiz questions. <laughs> yeah, no, no plus points for that. Okay, so question five. On early treadle machines, so you know the ones that you operate with your feet, um, you can buy a zigzag foot attachment, which, as the needle on the machine is fixed, move the fabric from side to side instead of the needle. Now, I don't know if you've ever noticed um, when you're zigzagging on a sewing machine, the needle jumps about. Well, on really early machines, the needle is fixed. So is it true or false that they invented a zigzagging machine that wildly flipped the fabric about instead of the needle? True or false, guys? That was question five. One point. Jane wants you to put the cat in a bomber jacket. I think Jane just wants to see you scratch. <laughs> Jane just wants to see me with scars down my face. <laughs> I reckon he'd be up for a bomber jacket, our cat. He'd rock it if we could get it in on him. <laughs> oh dear. So that was question five, guys. On early treadle machines, did they invent a zigzag foot that moved the fabric from side to side instead of the needle? True or false? So question six. Which of these various animal body parts have been used as sewing thread? Now, this is a historical question, really, isn't it? So there's a possibility um, there's uh, some of these are right, so you can get score more points than not. So which of these various animal body parts have been used as sewing thread? Sinew, cat gut, veins and human hair. So what do you think back in the day they used to sew with? Pretty gross. I blame the Victorians mainly for any gross question, even though I think this predates mainly the Victorians. So which of these various animal body parts have been used as sewing thread? Sinew, cat gut, veins and human hair. Alan was a great name for a pet, as was Jeff. <laughs> Jeff spelt how? Correctly. J-E-F-F. Oh, G-E-O-F-F. -F. Oh, okay. I, I assume that means Serena Cooper finds a J-E-F-F -F pet offensive in a farm. I don't know. Jeff spelt J-E-F-F -F is weird, I think. He wouldn't have suited Jeff. He's a perv. That's, that's an end to that, quite frankly. <laughs> um, so question seven for one point. Um, what is a French seam called in France? <laughs> So question seven, what is a French seam called in France? Question eight, what is a toile? That is the correct pronunciation by an English person, not as someone I used to work with, a twirly. It's just so wrong, it still grates me. It was decades ago, guys, and it still annoys me. She used to call them twirlies. So question eight for one point, what is a toile? And then question nine, for one point, what is the rail of shame? I feel like big out to my mate Hazel, because she coined this phrase. But if you know, you know. Even if you've never heard this before and you're hearing this for the first time, you know what a rail of shame is. So that's question nine for one point. So question ten for one point. Queen's College Oxford has an old tra tradition of presenting scholars with a needle and thread telling them to, and I quote, take these and be thrifty. Is that true or false? So question 10 for one point. Queen's College Oxford has an old tradition of presenting scholars with a needle and thread telling them to take these and be thrifty. True or false? Very exciting. Another historical one there for you. And question 11 for two points. When was the first promotional T-shirt produced for a film and what was that film? I like this fact. I don't know why I like this fact, but I do. Question 11 for two points was when was the first promotional T-shirt produced and for what film? Guys, I used to work for a cinema and they used to churn promotional T-shirts out of out. out I mean, it was a it was a dark day when we got the um, was the the film that Mr Bean did. 
Johnny English. Oh God, we all had to wear promotional t-shirts for Johnny English that made it look like we were wearing fake tuxedos. That might have been the day I decided to leave. <laughs> that was pretty horrible, wasn't it? <laughs> oh dear. Anyway, so question 12 for one point. Why are there rivets on jeans? So, you know, the little silver or gold things that you've got all over jeans. Why are they there? That's for one point. And question 13 for one point. When were jeans as we know them invented? <laughs> I think this is because I'm making a lot of jeans at the moment or I'm being commissioned to make a lot of jeans. I need to make myself a pair of jeans. I found about 19 different types of denim fabric in my stash the other day, so I've got to use it somehow. So question 12 for one point was why are there rivets on jeans? And question 13 for one point was when were jeans as we know them invented? And question 14 is another multiple choice. So it's one point here. Why is a t-shirt called a t-shirt? Is it A, because it's shaped like a T, B, after teenagers in the 1950s, C, F. Scott Fitzgerald told us to in his novel, This Side of Paradise, and D, because they were originally made from tea cotton, a waste product of denim manufacture. So that was, why is a t-shirt called a t-shirt? A, it's shaped like a T, B, after teenagers in the 50s, C, F. Scott Fitzgerald told us to in his novel, This Side of Paradise, or D, because they were originally made from tea cotton, which is a waste product of denim manufacture. Just learning things all over the shop, weren't we, last night, right in these? Let's give people time to write their answers down. Now Purge just staring at me. So question 15, while the Egyptians are well known for their use of cotton, when was it first cultivated? So question 15 for one point, when, while the Egyptians are well known for their use of cotton, when was it first cultivated? Now we're on to picture rounds. Yeah. So the next five questions all have a possibility of two points per question. And each question, the, the, each, each question has the same question. Basically, what character and what movie is this costume from? So question 16 is what character and what movie is this costume from? <laughs> I feel like I need to vamp for a little bit here to make sure everyone can have a good look at it. I've ever seen this film. I feel like I have. You ever seen this? Don't say what it is. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I couldn't hear you. Jane shouting out her answers. <laughs> Jane's don't shout out the answers. There's always one. Quiz. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> hilarious. So, question sixteen: What character and what movie is this costume from? So, question seventeen. What character and what movie is this costume from? It's so beautiful. I feel like I could sing a clue, but no one needs to hear that, so I won't. That's a clue in itself. <gasps> oh, no! <laughs> Trying to make sure everyone gets a good look at this one, even though I'm, I'm pretty sure that's really obvious. So there's two points for every one of these. So if you get the character and the film, you get two points per question. So question 18, what character and what film is this costume from? Jenny Brent is here. Hello, Jenny Brent. <laughs> like you're saying everyone's nose. It's Jenny, hello, Jenny. So what character and what costume is this film? Is this uh, costume from? I had fun doing these because actually it's, it's quite difficult to find ones that might trip people up or might, I don't know, be really obvious, but also not obvious. 
Question 19, what character and what movie is this costume from? I've got the best fact about this costume later on, but I can't tell you now because it'll give it away. So I think this might be one of my favourite movies, which I think is surprising when, I don't know. Good double films what we watched yesterday. Yeah, it should have been, yeah. So the final question in this quiz, question 20, what character and what movie is this costume from? Now I know I've not seen this film because the book made me cry for a week. So I've not watched this movie. <laughs> I can't do it. Maybe that means it's a musical because they have books. <laughs> Loads of films have books. There's no original ideas in Hollywood, is there? Jesus. That's more to do with marketing than creativity. I read this book when I was working for a bookshop on the tube and it made me cry on the tube in public. That's how sad it is. So there you go, that's the final question. So what I'm going to do now, guys, is we won't show you the title cards again. We might do for the last five questions. But I'm going to run through the questions super quick again so you guys can just double check. See what you got. I think I started easy and got harder. I'm not sure. That's what she said. I've been watching too much of the American Office, guys. If anyone is bored in isolation, watch the American Office. I swear to God, it's the best TV show. And then there's a podcast called Office Ladies where they talk about it. I'm watching it all again. It's great. Anyway, so question one for one point. What is the feed dog on a sewing machine? Question two for one point. What is the balance wheel on a sewing machine? Question three for one point. By 1900, what percentage of global sewing machine sales did Singer have? 80%, 50%, 65% or 25%? Slow down. Ah, okay. I can slow down. I can't. So question four was a two-parter. So it was two points. Question 4A was what percentage of sewers own more than one sewing machine, 19% or 51%? And question 4B, for one point, what percentage of sewers own just one sewing machine, 19% or 51%? Question 5, for one point, on early treadle sewing machines, so this is back in the day, like mine's from 1888, I think, my, sewing, my treadle sewing machine. So on early treadle sewing machines, you... Is that the one you do your film work on? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's the one where I, I force the BBC to understand me. Anyway, um, so on early treadle sewing machines, you can buy a zigzag foot attachment, which as the needle on the machine is fixed, it doesn't move. You used to move the fabric from side to side instead of the needle. Is that true or false? So... Question six, which of these various animal body parts have been used as sewing thread? I feel like you have to really work at it to like be a sewer back in the day. Like you have to really want it. Like uh, A, sinew, B, cat gut, C, veins, D, human hair. I feel like they used to call it cat gut, but it wasn't cat gut. Like it wasn't from actual cats. Oh. It's like the, something about the process. I feel like I've been reading too many murder books. Yeah, I don't know. Might look that up later. Might not. You don't actually read many murder books. You generally read about, like, vampires and... <laughs> I do witches. not read about vampires and witches. Jesus, Martin. Don't put that out in the public. Uh, it's been a very stressful time, guys. <laughs> don't judge my reading habits. Anyway, so question seven. For one point, what is a French scene called in France? Question eight for one point, what is a toile? Question nine, what for one point, what is the rail of shame? Question 10 for one point, Queen's College Oxford has an old tradition of presenting scholars with a needle and thread, telling them to take these and be thrifty. Is that true or false? I don't know how I'd go on that one. Like, I know the answer, obviously, but I don't know how I'd go on that one because, you know, it's a strange place, Oxford. So question 11, which was two points. Uh, when was the first promo T-shirt produced and for what film? 
Question 12, for one point, why are there rivets on jeans? And question 13, for one point, when were jeans as we know them invented? Question 14, for one point, why is a t-shirt called a t-shirt? Is it because it's shaped like a T? Is it after teenagers in the 1950s? Uh, is it because F. Scott Fitzgerald told us to in his novel, This Side of Paradise? Or is it because they were originally made from tea cotton, a waste product of denim manufacture? Many choices there. Question 15, for one point. While the Egyptians are well known for their use of cotton, when was it first cultivated? Egyptians were quite a while ago anyway, weren't they? When you think about it. So question 16, and we'll show the title cards again really quickly for you guys, just so that you can um, see the question again. Sorry, I'm fussing about with my microphone here. So I'm worried about jiggling it. And then I'm jiggling it more. So question 16, what character and what movie is this costume from? And then 17, same question. And then 18, same question. <laughs> and then 19, same question. And then 20, same question. Chance if anyone wants to hear a question again. Oh yeah, so if you need if you need to hear a question again, if you missed any of those or you want me to repeat any, absolutely tell me to and I'm happy to repeat some again if you need me to. I'm gonna give you guys a few minutes just to uh, add your scores up. I hope no one's I hope some I hope people have got some points this week. Still feeling really bad about last week. Oh, and also comment now if you want to hear questions about any subject next week. It's been quite interesting researching all of this, actually. I've actually learned some, some little tidbits here and there. Number three, please. Number three. By 1900, what percentage of global sewing machine sales did Singer have? 80%, 50%, 65% or 25%? Oh, Martin, have you put the title card up? Oh, aren't you nice? There's furious activity going on behind the scenes here. I'm just sat here. And Martin is furiously doing things. It's, it's brilliant. It's like a TV show. Now, what do they do? Go to camera two. Things like that. Tell Team Random Rose that we can't show Purd because we haven't come to an arrangement with his agent yet. <laughs> Oh, yeah, to see Purge, you'll have to call his agent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he demands fees. There's a, there's a whole thing. There's, there's forms. There's releases to be signed. I just, you know. <laughs> Actually, Purge was a rescue cat. We got him when we lived in France um, and brought him back to the UK with us last year. Um, and he's, he's, I don't know, he's, it's taken him about a year to settle down, hasn't he? Like, for sure. And he's just about getting there now. So we, we still can't quite pick him up, so... Yeah, he's very cute, though. Maybe next week I'll uh, put a photo up for you guys. He hangs out in my studio sometimes with me, which is very nice to have a little buddy, especially now when we're all isolated and lonely. It's quite nice to have a cat, so that's good. Do you reckon everyone's added up furiously? Yeah. Do I need to talk some more? I can tell you what I've been sewing this week. It's nothing new. It's scrubs and masks. That's all I've been sewing this week. So if everyone wants to email their answers to the person to their left. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pass your quiz to the person on the left and we'll mark them. <laughs> I'm sort of peed that no one else thought of doing this because I'd love to do a sewing quiz. <laughs> Someone else live stream a sewing quiz so I can do it, please. <laughs> so do you want some answers? Are we ready for some answers, do you reckon? Yeah, I think we're yeah. probably good and ready. I don't know anything else to say. No, I've written it all out. Yeah? Yeah. Cool, right. Question one. 
What is the feed dog on the sewing machine? It is the set of metal teeth under your sewing machine presser foot. So if you put your hand under your presser foot, you can feel little metal teeth. That's what it is. And it's there to help the fabric being pulled through as you sew. So it's little teeth under the feet. Question two. So score one point if you got that one right or a version of what I'd said right. So question two, what is the balance wheel? The balance wheel is the wheel on the right hand side of the sewing machine. If you roll it towards you, the needle goes up and down. And I genuinely didn't know that until a couple of years ago. I just called it that thing. <laughs> the winder maybe? Yes, yeah, so if you put a version of that, give yourself a point. So first multiple choice question, question three for one point. By 1900, what percentage of global sewing machine sales did Singer have? And it was 80%. 80 freaking percent that's so many percent i reckon it was because they used to do this really cool thing where you could do like a higher purchase so um you had communities banding together so you'd get like three or four wives banding together to uh to buy one sewing machine between them they made it incredibly affordable for you to be able to afford this insane new technology that you could sew dresses together in a couple of hours versus you know a week or more um, so yeah, they made it very, very versatile. So I reckon that's how they got 80% of the market share there. 80% is insane, isn't it? Yeah. 1900. So yeah, question four, which was our first two part, our only two part, I don't know what I'm talking about. Do they have 19% by 1980? Yeah, it was nine, yeah. 0.8% <laughs> by... Which metal was the right answer? Uh, A. A, 80%, that was the right answer for question three. So question four, A, what percentage of sewers own more than one sewing machine? And that is 51%. And it's actually 51% of sewers own three or more sewing machines. So I'm not insane. I'm normal. <laughs> uh, <laughs> how many sewing machines do you have? I've got eight. No, I must have more than that. I think I've got 10, actually, if you count the treadle and the industrials. I'm about to buy more. Woo! I, I think Jenny Brent's challenging you to create a 1900 breast on a. <gasps> oh my god! Oh my god! Hey, I tell you what, actually, if self isolation continues and I don't need to sew masks or scrubs, that is totally a project I'd be up for doing creating a 1900 dress on a. Well, an 1888 dress on an 1888 sewing machine. That would be such a cool project. I bet I'd swear so much. It doesn't go very fast. What's really funny is if you if you actually if you ever been on a treadle is is you you have to rock, and like you really get into it, and then you start second guessing yourself, and all that happens is it, it clunks to a halt because you're not rocking. It's it's embarrassing. It's good fun. So question four a was what percentage of sewers own more than one sewing machine, and that's fifty one percent, which means that question b for one point four b is what percentage of sewers own just one sewing machine, and that's nineteen percent. I'm guessing it's all the newbies out there. They'll learn. They'll learn they need lots of sewing machines for no apparent reason. So question 4A answer was 51% and question 4B answer was 19%. So if you've got that the right way around, you've got two points. So question five, on early treadle sewing machines, you can buy a zigzag foot attachment, which as the needle on the machine is fixed, move the fabric from side to side instead of the needle. Is that true or false? What do you reckon mine? Um, I wasn't listening. <gasps> you weren't listening? Shock horror. It's true. I'm desperate to find one of these things, actually, because apparently they just, they, they move the fabric like this. So the fabric is doing this, but the needle is in one position. And I just love the visual of that. So yeah, on early treadle machines, you can buy a zigzag foot attachment, which moves the fabric, not the needle. Hooray, one point. So question six, which of these various animal body parts have been used as sewing thread? A, sinew, B, cat gut, did it cough? No, yep, no, C, veins, D, human hair. And this was mean guys, because they're all true, which is pretty gross. So you can score a point for however many you said were right. <laughs> Trixie. So yeah, sinew, cat gut, veins, and human hair have all been used as sewing thread. I feel misled. I guess sewer's got to sew, right? 
<laughs> Feel me slid. <sighs> well, you know, I've got to make it hard somewhere, haven't I? So question seven, I think this possibly is my favourite sewing fact, and it's it's true as far as I can research it, which is asking French sewers when I was in France and they said it was true. Um, question seven, for one point, what is a French seam called in France? And the answer is an English seam <laughs> or couture anglaise is what they call it. Apparently there's loads of terms that they have that we call French something and they call... No, couture anglaise, not crème anglaise. <laughs> it's not custard. So yeah, uh, French call a French seam an English seam. So yeah, apparently there's loads of terms that um, other countries have and we call it that they, country and they call it our country. So They also call Wimbledon the English Open. Do they? It's less sewing facts, isn't it? Wimbledon facts. Mm -hmm. Maybe you should start a Wimbledon fact quiz. So yeah, question seven, for one point, what, it, what is a French seam called in France? It is called an English seam or couture anglaise. Question eight, for one point, what is a toile? And a toile is a mock-up of your design or a, something you've made in a cheaper fabric to check your pattern works. If you've put anything similar to that, you can score yourself one point. Am I going too quick? No, no? cool, okay. So question nine, what is the rail of shame? Now this was coined in sewing club, I'm not gonna lie, but you know, deep in your heart, you know what this is if you've never heard this term before. And it's somewhere that you put things that you've made for yourself that did not work. That is your rail of shame. Might be a box, might be a bag in the back of your wardrobe, but you, we've all got a rail of shame of those projects that didn't work. So if you put something like that, you can give yourself a point. <laughs> My rail of shame is prodigious. <laughs> Oh dear, that's what we do with all of those. Maybe we should set up an enormous swap for rail of shame items. So that was for one point, question nine. So question 10, for one point, Queen's College in Oxford has an old tradition of presenting scholars with a needle and thread telling them to take these and be thrifty. Is that true or false? And the answer is true. Apparently it's a whole ceremony, I think it's in September maybe. Thought that, you know, if you go to Oxford, you're, are you quite well off, maybe? I feel like you don't need to be thrifty, but well, okay. They do do that, apparently. Purge line on his back. Licking his tummy. So, question 11 for two points. When was the first promotional t shirt produced for a film, and what was that film? And it was The Wizard of Oz in 1939. It's ages ago. I probably would have said something like Ghostbusters. What would you have said? Um, you think about big films coming out? Promotional items? Jaws. Oh, Jaws, yeah. I, I would have gone 80s, definitely. I wouldn't have gone, I wouldn't have gone maybe 70s, but yeah, 1939 for The Wizard of Oz. So question 12, for one point, why are there rivets on jeans? Um, they're there. Originally, they're there on the points of most stress so that they um, make sure that they, the, the jeans don't fall apart, basically. So there's quite a lot on, like, uh, properly made jeans. There's rivets all over the place. Um, and, yeah, they're, like, sort of down the side of the hip and things like that. So if you brush against something, it protects the jean, the denim. Um, so, yeah, if you put anything similar to that, it sort of helps, the, helps them wear and tear, maybe. You can give yourself a point. So question 13, when were jeans as we know them invented? And they were invented in 1873, ages ago. And denim's been around for a while longer than that, actually. But, um, but yeah, jeans as we know them were invented in 1873. Um, I think it was something to do with the gold rush, actually, in America. People thought were invented for Star Wars. And I have Star Wars t-shirts, so that makes sense. Okay. Oh, yeah, Star Wars, yeah. That could have been one of the first ones, yeah. It's Wizard of Oz. Blooming Wizard of Oz. Still haven't seen it. Um, so, yeah, jeans, as we know them, were invented in 1873. Tira, give yourself a point if you put 1870s, even. Gosh. So, question 14, why is a T-shirt called a T-shirt? Now, guys, I had difficulty reading out these because we were thinking of the answers for this. <laughs> and making shit up last night, which was really funny. 
So I said, for one point, why is a t-shirt called a t-shirt? A, it's shaped like a T. B, after teenagers in the 50s. C, F. Scott Fitzgerald told us to in his novel, the, This Side of Paradise. And D, because they were originally made from tea cotton, a waste product of denim manufacture. Now, B and D are complete and utter bobbins. The answer is because it's shaped like a T. It's a really boring answer. Sorry, guys. A T-shirt is called a T-shirt because it is shaped like a T. I thought the F. Scott Fitzgerald thing. I'm coming to that. The F. Scott Fitzgerald thing is, is true. He mentioned T-shirts for the first time in literature. I think it was in the in the 20s. He wrote in, and coined, sort of coined the phrase in literature, T-shirt. So that was vaguely true. But yeah, tea cotton is not a waste product of denim manufacture. <laughs> I nearly couldn't smile reading that out. <laughs> oh, made me laugh anyway. So question 15 for one point. While the Egyptians are well known for their use of cotton, when was it first cultivated? So I thought this was really interesting actually. I don't know if that's the only reason it's in there really. It was first cultivated by the Aztecs in present day Mexico over 8,000 years ago. I wouldn't have said Mexico at all. Probably might have gone eight, eight, ten thousand years ago or something, but would have put it into India or China or somewhere like that. So I thought it was really interesting. So question 15 for one point. While the Egyptians are well known for their use of cotton, when was it first cultivated? It was cultivated by the Aztecs over 8,000 years ago. Now, this is a bit I know you guys have all been waiting for because, I mean, I liked thinking up these questions and I would have loved being presented these questions. So these are our picture questions. Hooray! What so, was the date? What? 8,000 years ago. On May the 4th. Oh, May the 4th, 8,000 years ago, of course, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, so question 16, which is the first of our picture round quiz. Have you got the, yeah, you have, oh, well done. Um, what character and what movie is this costume from? So the first one is Scarlett O'Hara with Gone, and Gone with the Wind. I zoomed in on her hand. I thought this was really obvious, but I, I, I don't know if it is or not. Um, but yeah, Scarlett O'Hara with Gone with the Wind. So you get a point for the name and a point for the film. I don't know. I still don't know if I've... I remember the end of it, so maybe I've seen bits of it on TV. Frankly, sewing quiz, I don't give a damn. Frankly, sewing quiz, I don't give a damn. Um, so question 16 was Scarlett O'Hara, Gone with the Wind. So question 17... And it's Satin from Moulin Rouge, of course. I focused in on her boobs a bit there, didn't I, on the picture I showed you guys? <laughs> um, I love this costume. I think it's absolutely stunning. Um, she did break multiple ribs during filming, though, because the corsets were apparently too tight. But I call that wearing your corset wrong, but whatever. Um, but yeah, beautiful, whoops, beautiful costumes in that, in that film. So question 17 was Satine, Moulin Rouge. Question 18, I was really trying hard to trip you guys up because I thought it looked like it might be James Bond or something like that. But question 18, the answer was Indiana Jones and it's the film is Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Which is, again, one of my favourite films. Temple of Doom is that second one? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's a good one. The third one is always my favourite. And it's a shame they, ne they didn't make any more after that, right? It's mm -hmm. just, just three Indiana Jones films is a, is a real, real shame. <laughs> oh dear. So yeah, question 18. So if you've got Indiana Jones and then you've got Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, then you scored two points. Question 19, what costume, what film? It is Mark Watney in The Martian. I guess you could say Matt Damon. Who's going to remember what Mark Watney unless you're like us and you've read the film, read the book a load of times. And I genuinely love this film. I think this is just the most amazing film. It, you, it's so rare to have a film where you just have one character and you're absolutely transfixed by what they're going through. And we were having a chat about this before, actually, that um, NASA has Mars spacesuits designed, ready to go, because obviously they're thinking about going to Mars at some point. Um, but of course, if you have them in orange, then it doesn't show up because Mars is red. Um, and Martin just told me before this started that theirs are green, not orange. And they look incredibly like Buzz Lightyear, which I absolutely love that fact. I think that's brilliant. Green Mariner Valley and beyond. 
<laughs> um, so yeah, question 19 was Mark Watney in The Martian. Watch it if you haven't, it's absolutely brilliant. And then question 20, uh, the final question, the answer was Kira Knightley in Atonement or Cecilia Tallis. I can't read that from here. Is it Tallis? I just know it as Kira Knightley from Atonement in that beautiful, beautiful green dress, which is incredibly famous now. So yeah, there you have it, guys. I'm going to give you five minutes to add it all up and let me know what you scored. I'm desperate to know if people got more than six points this week because that I just felt so mean, guys. So mean last last year, last week. Oh, and Atonement was the film that I've never seen because the book made me cry on the tube, which it genuinely did. I was I was watching the tube. I was what I was reading it on the tube, going to my my uh, my day job. Are we still up? Going to my day job um, at the bookshop. I was a manager in a bookshop for a bit just after I graduated, um, and yeah, it made me cry, Pff, ugly cry on the tube. So I decided I didn't need to watch that movie. Good book though. <laughs> Oh dear. We've got anyone telling us their points? How much they've scored yet? Jamie Grant's got 14. Way! 14! That's amazing! <laughs> um, Landon Rose, who were previously losing, got 16. An 16! An improvement on 4.5 last week. Yay! Oh, you were 4.5 last week? Oh, I'd say that. 16's a massive improvement on last week then. Becky Davis is uh, 14 as well. Becky Davis, 14. Amazing, amazing. Uh, Serena Cooper, 15. Serena, 15. Brilliant work. Oh, everyone scored more than last week then. That's good. Josh That's Charlotte good. Charlotte got 16. Oh, Josh Charlotte, well done, well done. Anyone over 20? Did anyone get over 20 points at all? No, your quiz is only possible. Of course I did. <laughs> <It's so bad. laughs> I tried so hard, guys. <laughs> I might have to do more visual rounds and multiple choice next Miriam week. Miriam got 16 points. Lots of 16 points. Miriam with 16 points you there. You don't get to watch enough movies and you couldn't name the characters. Oh, that's okay, though. Chat's got 15. 15. Lots of 15s and 16, guys. Well done. That's amazing. Mary <laughs> Hemmett's family got 15. 15, another one. But she got tripped up by movies. Ah, oh, yeah. Sorry, guys. I'm a I'm a costume maker. There's always going to be movie questions in this. That's my Deirdre my day job. Ten and a half, and enjoyed it. Oh, who was that, Deirdre? Or she got ten and a half, enjoyed it. I can't tell. <laughs> well done, ten and a half, and enjoyed it. I'll take that. <laughs> That's amazing, guys. So no one over twenty yet, though. So I still feel really mean. <laughs> Well, hopefully um, this will go up so um, people can watch it um, in the week in between. So um, hopefully some people in the week will watch it and uh, and score a little bit higher. Um, but yeah, let me know. Comment if you want questions about certain subjects or anything or, you know, I don't know. Were multiple choice questions good? Were picture questions good? I could do which stitch is this next week. We could do a which stitch, which stitch is this. We could do like get Reagan to do a little ha huh, thing like a little what are they called? Sting. No, like a little jingle. A jingle. Which stitch is this? I like the idea. Of <laughs> Which stitch? Yeah. Um, so yeah, let, let me know. Comment if you want any questions about certain things or like if that was way too hard and you're getting annoyed with me. <laughs> Which is fair, not going to lie. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you so much for joining in, guys. This was this was really good fun. Um, any more, any more um, points coming in? Miriam and Lewis enjoyed the whole thing. Ah, good. Well, as long as we enjoyed it, that's the point, I suppose. I shall try not to go too hard on the history questions maybe next week. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for joining me. Um, we may we may move it to eight o'clock next week, but we seem to have been okay with the stream this week. So um, seven o'clock seems to be golden. So I will see you here next week um, at seven o'clock for another sewing quiz. Um, stay safe out there, guys. Wash your hands. Um, don't go out. You know all the all the same, same things. Sewing time, same sewing channel. Same sewing time, same sewing channel. I will see you next week, guys. Have the best week. Don't work too hard. Love to you all. Bye. <laughs>